Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. Our guest is going to be Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. He is the beef extension veterinarian here in Kansas, and we're going to talk about something that can affect everybody's herd, that's tetanus. Stay tuned after these messages, and I hope that you enjoy our show. Captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Dr. Tarpoff, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Folks, Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, he is the Beef Extension Veterinary Specialist here at Kansas State University covers all things beef cattle that has to do with medicine, uh, preventative medicine, cow, calf, stalker, feedlot. Uh, pleasure to have you back at Kansas State. It's a pleasure to be back. Yep. Doc Tarpoff has some practice experience and he has a lot of real world experience of things that uh, a lot of times we don't maybe get around uh, the university system, but uh, we're very fortunate to have you at Kansas State. And, and uh, AJ, today we're going to talk about tetanus. And it's something that, that while we, we all go in and get vaccinated ourselves for it, we, we don't think about it a lot of times in our, in our beef cattle. Well, tetanus, it, it, it can happen in beef cattle. It can happen really in all species. And, and depending on how we manage it and control the risk of it is if we'll ever actually see the disease or not. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when we start to think about te- what, what is tetanus? I mean, just let's start out with well, what tetanus. causes it. What causes it? It's a bacteria. Mm-hmm. Okay, this bacteria is a little bit different than most of the diseases we deal with because it lives in the soil. It really lives in all soil all around all, all around the world. And what's special about it is that it actually the bacteria itself forms a spore to protect itself, and it can live for a long, long time in the soil itself. So this is the same. This is this is clostridium. This, this is, is clostridium. This is this is a clostridium species. So it's very similar to black leg and, and other forms of clostridium that are going to be living in the soil and producing these spores. spores. So, so let's say, so the calf can get it from grazing, they can get it from the environment. Uh, do, is it, do they ingest it or how? Well, they can ingest it, but it doesn't cause any illness. It flows through the digestive tract, no big deal. Uh, what happens is we need an active infection or some type of wound. If we have compromised skin, the skin is a great shield to protect the body from all the outside elements. When we have compromise in that skin, that's when we end up having issues. And what the, the spore comes in and it, it forms an oxygen free environment. And then that's where the bacteria can thrive and cause an issue. Gotcha. So when we're, when we're talking about tetanus, it's most everybody's likely got it in the soil and their, whether it's a grow yard or their pastures or whatever. Mm-hmm. But once you create the type of wound that'll set this up, that's when we have an issue. Absolutely. And, when, and a lot of different things can cause it. Um, some of our production practices like castration, dehorning, uh, after calving, if we have metritis issues with the cow, we can run into some of these issues. So we always have uh, something leading up to leading to clinical signs of tetanus. We, we have an active wound uh, that is compromised. And then that's when the spore gets in and causes an issue. Yep. And when you say castration, obviously banding is the one, the type of castration that, that is the one we think about the most. Typically, the, the banding castrations, uh, it, it, it is more prevalent than actually a, a cutting castration. Uh, we also see it with uh, different types of banding around a horn or on a tail, any of those other issues when we have compromised tissue that's, that's starting to die. And that's where, that's where we run into the issue. Perfect. Well, let's take a break. Let's go to commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, the Kansas State Beef Cattle Extension Veterinarian. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More right after these messages. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're at Kansas State University and where Dr. Tarpoff serves as the Beef Extension Veterinary Specialist for the entire state of Kansas. And we're very lucky to have him on board here at Kansas State University uh, to, to work. We've worked together before. Mm -hmm. We've worked together when you're in practice, and, and it's great to have you here to, to work together again, AJ. And, and so let's talk about tetanus. So when, when I walk out, what's, what am I going to see if I have a calf that's succumbing to tetanus? Okay, well... With tetanus, there's varying degrees, and it, and it kind of progresses from one to the other. Uh, when early signs of tetanus is really just a generalized stiffness of the animal. They're not moving quite right. They're really stiff all over. Um, and as that progresses, uh, the, the bacteria itself, once we have the infection, releases a neurotoxin. And it can ascend up the body where they, can, they get very rigid. And they like to call it a, a sawhorse stance. Gotcha. Well, and when they are sawhorse, their legs are fully extended. They're very reluctant to move. Uh, it's it's quite something to see. Yep. And then when they fall over, they'll they'll maintain that stance. Uh, and and you know, there's a reason why we call it lockjaw uh, instead of tetanus. Well, the the body actually starts to develop these horrible spasms. And what, one of the early signs is the muscles in the jaw. And where they won't be able to eat, they won't be able to open their jaw, the spasms in the muscles just contract that jaw extremely hard. Yep. Um, they can be pretty, uh, uh, they can be stimulated by noise too. Mm -hmm. Noise and light. Okay. So if something surprises them, you walk past an animal, it, they almost have a panic attack. They get extremely rigid. And if you look at their eyes, they get actually the third eyelid of the eye comes over and they may fall over. You know, it's not something we, we like to see, but, but you can actually help differentiate whether or not it's tetanus or some other neuro disease by that. By the spasms, by the third eyelid coming over, and the excitability, uh, th those are very indicative of tetanus. Yep. So, so just so there's different ways we can find them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe too late when we find those, but you start looking then backtracking through the ones that have the less severe signs? Absolutely. We'll have much better treatment success in the early stages of the disease. That That's always key. If they're already down, they're flat out, they're in the super rigid stance on the ground, uh, we're not going it, to, it's almost a little bit too late for those animals. Yeah, those are the ones that are going to have have very uh, great prognosis, yeah. but, but if caught earlier, we can treat the others. So let's, let's uh, kind of move forward and take a break and come back after the break and we'll talk about treatments. Sounds great. Thanks for being here. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff after these messages. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground, and 
thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. And I, I farm and ranch by myself. This is not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And, I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. and Got down there at eight o'clock in the morning and by 11.30 the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Likasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA Tip of the Day is proper alignment with the trailer and the chute. It's really important that when cattle arrive at a feedlot or when the cattle are being loaded out for shipping, that trucks, when they come in uh, to back up to the loading facilities, is that when they come in, they're square with the alley in which they come in. Sometimes we have trucks where they're six inches off or 12 inches off, and what that creates is it creates an option to bruise cattle and uh, uh, shoulder bruises, flank bruises, uh, any of those types of things. The other uh, uh, injury that can occur in that instance is, is if we get a leg that falls off or if there's too much space between the loading dock and the truck where a foot can slip through and we can fracture a leg. So the, the most important tip is make sure that we're square, make sure that we're flush when we come back and that everything is in line for cattle to properly load into the truck. And that is your tip of the day. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. Visit our picturesque town on the Santa Fe Trail for the Council Grove Fall Festival featuring the Voices of the Wind People pageant on the banks of the Neosho River, September 16 and 17. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. AJ Tarpoff. We're at Kansas State University where Dr. Tarpoff is the state beef extension veterinarian and is covering our state, covering well, more than our state, works nationally with the Academy of Veterinary Consultants, American Association of Bovine Practitioners, and many producers 
uh, in the United States and Canada. And, and Dr. Tarpoff, um, pleasure to have you here. We're talking about tetanus, and we've got through that it's a clostridium species that we can set up with, with the different types of skin wounds. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it likes an anaerobic environment, an environment there, that there's no oxygen. And then when we find these animals, they're, they're in rigor or, or the locked jaw, the, they're super excitable. We know we have tetanus on our premise. We know we have an issue with tetanus here in these kids. Can we treat them? We do have some treatment. It's not always 100% successful, but we can, we can treat these animals. Uh, what's available uh, for treatment of tetanus, we actually have an antitoxin. I brought up earlier that, yep. that there's actually a neurotoxin that tetanus releases. Uh, we actually have an antitoxin to help combat that. Now, since it is a bacterial disease, we can actually use antibiotics to treat this illness as well. So when, during treatment, usually it's penicillin, antitoxin, but we, have, we also have to think about what initiated it. Where's that deep penetrating wound? You know, is it a banding issue? So we treat the wound, we treat systemically with antibiotics, and we use antitoxin. Gotcha. So um, obviously it's a bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you can kill the bacteria with the, with the antibiotic. And then the antitoxin is the same as is something that's going to go in and clean up the toxins given off by the spores. Correct. Gotcha. And so, so we're going to kill the bacteria with the antibiotic. We're going to clean up the toxins with the antitoxin. And then we're going to clean up the source of the infection by the initial it, wound, wound yeah. debridement and, mm -hmm. and things to that nature. So when these animals, you know, after we treat them, are there other, you know, things that we want to do to help provide recovery for these types of animals? We do need to provide extra care for these animals. Uh, some things that, that, that it is recommended, the, the stimulus, they, they still get greatly excited. Some of these animals you actually give, uh, some of it is painful. So, so sometimes analgesics, uh, something to keep, you know, kind of decrease the amount of stress on that animal. We put them in a dark environment to okay. keep the sun, sunlight away from them. And these animals are prone to go down. Okay, so we need to be careful with the environment they're in, that there's nothing they can hurt themselves in the environment that they are in. Uh, think about bedding, some place that they're extremely comfortable. We, we will have better treatment, treatment success if we take these extra steps. Gotcha. So antibiotic, antitoxin, going to treat the wound, get them in a dark place, bed them, and then if they go down, we're going to treat them just as any other compromised animal that's a downer. Absolutely. And if they've been down for extended periods of time, we need to think about water. Okay, this animal needs water, it needs feed, and we may have to supplement some of those things for this animal. Perfect. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about preventing tetanus in your herd. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Kathleen Morris is the fifth generation of a Texas ranching family, and her mother is a veterinarian, so it was natural for her to choose a career in veterinary medicine. Her main interests are in equine dentistry and podiatry, but she also loves working with small ruminants and livestock. After graduation, she will spend the summer working in Alberta and then return to Texas to work full-time in a mixed practice. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. 
The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Folks, thanks for watching today on Doc Talk. I'm here with Dr. A.J. Tarpop, who's our state beef extension veterinary specialist here at Kansas State University. And, and we've talked about everything. Now we're, it's time to prevent tetanus. And it's, we have good vaccines. We have excellent vaccines for tetanus. And the biggest thing, uh, tetanus, if we can prevent it, it's a cheap vaccine, it's very effective, that's a step that we need to take. Okay. So now we get kind of caught up in this antitoxin versus toxoid. Uh, and so what's the difference between an antitoxin and a, and a toxoid? Okay. So the, the toxoid is, you know, little, it, you actually build immunity against that particular path, pathogen. Yeah. Antitoxin is really effective after the infection happens and we need to bind up that toxin. Okay, so to prevent the infection, we actually want the toxoid, not the antitoxin. So this is something that we're building immunity into the future. Antitoxin will not, not uh, build immunity into the future. And one way that I describe it is we give the toxoid to the animal and it will produce its own antitoxin in the blood. Correct. The antitoxin, if you're gonna give that, if you buy it, it's expensive. And you're going to give that because the animal doesn't have time to make its own. To make its own, we're going to give it to the animal. So we usually use the vaccine. We give a little bit of the toxoid, which is an injection of the toxin. It produces its own antitoxin. Yep, that, that, that's exactly the way we do it. And then it, it comes down to timing. Yep. You know, when, when do we actually vaccinate these animals? Uh, I, li I like to get people to uh, vaccinate for tetanus the first time we handle these calves whether that be branding, uh, castration, dehorning. If we're gonna be doing those practices and we already have the animal caught, we need to get a tetanus toxoid in, into that animal. Yeah, and I always wondered, you know, sometimes people only use uh, the toxoid, the tetanus toxoid when they ban cattle, but it won't hurt them to give it to them. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, and I don't, I, I guess I wonder why people don't use the, the tetanus toxoid or the, the, the you know, the eight way uh, clostridium, the seven-way black leg plus tetanus, routinely. And uh, I, I like to re routinely use it in the cow herd. I, I do like to use it on, on every animal. I think every animal needs at least one tetanus toxoid at least once in its life. I like to uh, boost those animals annually. Yeah, and horses are extremely sensitive to tetanus. They get tetanus by just looking at a piece of wire <laughs> on the fence. So we get almost. we have tetanus almost every time we, we handle horses as well. Right. Cattle aren't nearly as sensitive, but it can be a big problem. Now, horses and sheep are much more susceptible to tetanus, uh, but cattle still can definitely get tetanus. Perfect. Well, we're gonna uh, wind down the show, but uh, thanks for being on the show. If you don't mind, you know, you can, you can look up Dr. Tarpoff on the, the internet if you need a speaker for a meeting or, or something that you're heard. Uh, give him a call. He's a great veterinarian, great resource here in the state of Kansas and, and abroad. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being at K-State. Thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. It's been my pleasure to be uh, around you today. If you have a, a question and want to know more about the show, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. 
Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.